Boom. How good was this countdown? I love it. It's pretty <laughs> awesome. I am actually going to use it for my streams in the future. <laughs> it's really nice. I just don't know if there's like any sounds or or, or uh, anything like that, but uh, it looks pretty pretty cool, and it gives you more time to prepare, I guess. Um, hey, everyone, if if you're here, say hello, say hi, say something. I guess we're See, this is the problem with these streams. It's like there's a 30 second delay or something. <laughs> oh yeah, at least we have one person here. So hey, Boris. Hey. Oh yeah. <laughs> hey, Boris. Welcome, welcome. Chat, sit down. Nice. Welcome. Welcome, everyone. Welcome from. Hi from south of France. Nice. Love to be there now. <laughs> it's probably evening, but uh, it's probably nicer. Hey, I don't, we I don't... Might be going in a few months. What's that? We might be going in a few months to France. Well, yeah. Oh, you yeah, were right? KubeCon. KubeCon is in <laughs> France, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I completely, yeah. It's it's always odd that the the Chicago KubeCon hasn't started yet. Yet we already know what the next one is going to be. So uh, uh, that's interesting. Awesome. Hello from yeah. Montreal. Awesome. Yeah, that's, that, I, I'm guessing that's probably Archie, who's uh, signed in from the Kubernetes Canada account. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Hello, Archie. I, I know it's you. I know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, hey, Pradab. Yeah, there's a lot of people. Uh, keep, keep on coming. Keep on saying hi. <laughs> we'll have Bangle or oh my god, wow, all around the world. This is interesting. All right, so um, let's do like quick introductions. I'm Peter. Um, I'm a developer advocate at Solo, uh, and I've been working with Kubernetes and Istio and in general and cloud native for for a while. I like to say for a while. I don't say the actual years because it's uh, <laughs> it doesn't really matter, but it's been a while. Um, yeah, Marino, Alessandro. Yeah, sure. I'll go ahead. Hey, everyone. My name is Marino Widjay. I am a developer advocate at Solo as well. Uh, we are here to just talk to you about all things service mesh. And I'll say that, you know, certifications have taken a bit of a pause for the last little while because it's it takes a lot of time and, and planning and training. Uh, you know, you have to sit there and practice, especially for a certification like the ICA. So it's nice to get back into the rhythm of things. And I've I'm a bit of a cert junkie. I've taken a lot of certifications throughout my career, um, starting from like the early Cisco days all the way out to VMware. I took a couple of Amazon and, and Google certs and then kind of rounded out with some of the more cloud native focused certs. So I did the CK probably about three years ago, two years ago. I can't remember. Three years ago. Yeah, because it's expired now. Did my CCAD as well um, about two years ago. So I think it's about expired right now. Um, I attempted the CKS, I didn't pass, and I had another attempt, but I let it lapse. So I never got the opportunity to take that again. So maybe I will in the future, but they did launch a new one. Uh, I think it's an associate level security cloud native cert that's uh, available. And uh, it's more mul like multiple choice based. So maybe I should start there and then move towards the CKS. But hey, you know, we're here for the ICA. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pass it along to Alessandro. Excited to see you all here. Hey, glad to be here. So my history with, with the certification of the Linux Foundation uh, goes way back. So I was in the beta of the CKA. Uh, then I was in the CKD, helping, developing, and testing out. As a matter of fact, so I I passed it very early, like both CKA, CKD, and then also CKS when it came out. And Michael is on, on the chat. Um, so because I passed them very, very early, so I also got the trained trainer. So I actually one, of, I mean, one of the many, yeah, there's a few people, of course, uh, certified trainer for the Linux Foundation. And I actually did a train the trainer for, for Michael and other people. So I train other trainers. So I'm actually very impressed by the um, how long, how far along the, the certification came, came, came to be. Uh, first of all, because they are so hands on, and I hope the the Istio. I haven't seen it, of course, nobody has seen it uh, yet. But uh, the CK, CKD, CKS, the beauty of it is that it's fully hands on, and you have to really get 
to the in front of a terminal and start typing and using all the tricks of the Linux terminal, right? So and you know what I'm talking about. So so yeah, I'm I also got the PCA. I don't know if you ever attempt that. So I passed the Prometheus Prometheus certified administrator, which is also pretty pretty tough. And I learned a lot by by studying all the PromQL um, queries and stuff. And so now that the the Istio certification came out, I immediately put my my eyes on it. Unfortunately, we cannot even schedule it yet, but uh, we really look forward to to be fully certified in everything. Yeah, yeah. It's looks like you guys actually have more like more experience with certifications than I do. I don't think I've, I, I don't have any of the CKAs, the CKKKDs, whatever, all those uh, that you so nicely typed in the comments there. <laughs> yeah, my, my bad. I didn't realize that it would, um, it would display as such, but I, I will say like, I've even written certifications in the past as well when I was at VMware as well as Dell. Uh, although those certifications really ne went nowhere because the, by the time, you know, it's out, you, you've got a year where it's used and then the technology ages out. So it refreshes all over again. Plus then an organization changes, changes strategy and they go in a different direction. But uh, exam writing is actually very interesting because you're locked in a room having to sit there with others negotiating on what should be on the exam. And yeah. then you follow that with having to sit there and write your questions and justify where everything is or why everything is what it is. And then you, you debate the question. It's a long process. So yeah, I'm yeah, very thankful yeah. for. I'm actually involved in the. A, so the, there's a GitOps certification coming up. So I'm involved in writing some of those uh, questions as well. Uh, so I'm a certification junkie. What can I say? It's uh, once you get the hang of it, it's so cool. You want to have them all, right? So, but uh, these ones in particular, I mean, uh, I wouldn't say I'm not gonna say other vendors or other organization, but this one in particular, the, the ones from the Linux Foundation, because they are so hands-on, you do need real world skills to pass them. It's not you can't just yeah. study a book and go for it. It's uh, yeah, we're gonna yeah. get there, right? So I mean, th th there's I would say there's value in both, right? But these the the ones that are hands-on, I prefer those uh, uh, because it feels like you act not not it feels like you actually have to know the thing you can't like learn your way out of it you know like for for the multiple choice questions you can think oh well i can read a lot right and i can figure it out without even ever touching you know or writing code or writing a yaml maybe right but these are actual hands-on so it's much more uh i guess much more realistic right in terms of showing what uh, uh what a person can do right um Oh, Leon's here as well. Hey, Leon. Um, all right, so let me, I, I'm just going to quickly switch. I know we talked about this uh, uh, a little bit, right? But uh, so this week, Mesh Week, uh, what we're going to do is we'll talk about Istio Certified Associate Certification. Uh, but more specifically, we'll actually talk about the different topics that are part of the certification, right? So the the way that we taught this through is you could use these videos if you want to prepare for the exam or if you just want to learn more about Istio, right? We uh, will use istio.io. There's a lot of great documentation there. There's a lot of great examples and uh, 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 scenarios and things that you can actually practice, right, for, uh, for the exam. Uh, as Alessandro said, that the exam is, you can, purchase it already, but it's not going to be available until November, right? So if you purchase it today or whenever, uh, that gives you, I guess, what, one more full month uh, or <laughs> more than a month to prepare if you want to pass it and if you want to be the first one to get that batch, right? Um, so who is this exam for? Is a pre-professional certification designed for engineers, CICD practitioners, or anyone who has interest in Istio? Uh, it is a hands-on exam, just like CKA, CKAD, and all those other exams. So it's performance-based. So when when they say it's performance-based, that means that you're going to get a 
actual environment. You're going to get an actual scenario that you have to solve in that environment. But there's also multiple choice questions as well. Right? So it's a mix. And it's an online and it's proctored, right? So you have to have your camera on and, and all that thing. All right. So what these are the five topics or five groups of topics that we'll talk about this week. And today we'll start with STO installation, upgrade, and configuration. So in the domains and competencies section, uh, CNCF is telling us these are the things that uh, one should practice, learn, know about, right? So uh, we'll go through these. We'll, we'll show how to use the Istio CLI to install Istio on a cluster, basic installation. Then we'll talk about Istio Operator API and see how we can use the Istio Operator to customize the installation. And finally, we'll also look at how to use overlays to manage Istio component settings. So these are things like Let's say you want to deploy uh, uh, or install multiple ingress uh, gateways or multiple egress gateways, or you want to change the name or change the namespaces or even change the Kubernetes uh, resources uh, uh, in terms of how much memory, how much CPU they use, et cetera. So we'll show how to do those things as well. And then I also have, if, if we have enough time, we can look at uh, maybe the upgrades and then also uh, how to customize like do some advanced Helm chart customizations as well. Even though those are not explicitly called out here, you never know what's going to show up on the exam. Right? Um, all right, so I do have a couple of slides uh, that I quickly want to go through uh, just so uh, we're all on the same page. I don't know if it's hard to judge from the chat, but I'm assuming uh, at least the majority of people, if not everyone, is familiar with Kubernetes. Uh, I don't know if you want to do a poll or not, but I'm assuming you're all familiar at least with Kubernetes, and you probably have some familiarity with uh, Istio as well. But just in case, and this will be like a one-minute overview, so what is Istio? Istio is a... Um, is a service mesh, uh, service mesh Istio. It's a service mesh. It's a dedicated infrastructure layer that you can add to your application, and what it does, it allows you to transparently uh, add things like security, observability, uh, routing, traffic management, all that to your apps without changing uh, any of your application scope. Um, the way it does that is by injecting this Envoy proxy, the sidecar that intercepts all the traffic that's entering and all the traffic that's exiting your uh, uh, applications or services. So at a high level, there are two components. There's the data plane and the control plane. So the data plane of Istio is made out of all those proxies that are deployed alongside your applications. And in the control plane, the Istio's control plane, that's the place where uh, you actually push the configuration to. And then the control plane is then uh, uh, responsible for taking that configuration, transforming it uh, into uh, Envoy configuration, and then pushing it to the data plane, pushing it to uh, the data, uh, to the Envoy proxies, basically. Now, in order to get the control plane and other components into your cluster, you need to install Istio. So how do you do that? Uh, basically, there are uh, two ways, and I'm speaking of two ways, even though there are three of them listed here, and I'll, I'll get to that. Why, why is that in a second? So first one is using the Istio CLI, so Istio CTL. Uh, you can use that to install Istio. The other one is using the Helm, chart, Helm charts. The third way uh, that I mentioned here is using the Istio operator. However, Istio operator is discouraged. Uh, so you should not be really using it. Uh, uh, you should either use the Istio CLI or Helm charts. And I think in production, what we see most is people use Helm charts with something like Argo CD, right, to uh, hey, deploy. Peter, I have a question. Yeah. So in what situation would I want to use the Istio operator for installation of Istio? I mean, even though we wouldn't recommend it for production, what are the circumstances that we want to use it? So, I mean, I don't know if there are any circum circumstances specifically that are called out. I honestly, I haven't looked into it recently too much. It is discouraged. But the way that Istio operator basically works is you 
grab your Istio CLI, and then you say, hey, install this operator, right, into my uh, into my cluster. And then that operator is responsible for listening to the Istio, uh, um, uh, Istio, Istio operator API resources to install Istio, right? So it's like there's an extra step uh, almost to it, and there's an extra pod that runs in your cluster that's just responsible for the installation. You don't have to do that, right? Um, so, so, so there is a question here. Sorry, mm -hmm. ambient mesh is the new method which doesn't have sidecar, so cert is based on old concepts. So technically, that is true. That's and that's primarily because when ambient mesh was launched, it's it's sitting in an experimental state. So it's not worth currently testing on something that's experimental that hasn't been heavily used at the moment. But you know, I'll, I'll let Peter add some additional thoughts there. Yeah, I don't. I don't think it's part of. It's not explicitly called out in the uh, like in the CNCF stocks. If ambient is part of the certification, but it isn't, right? I mean, even though they're not, they would call it out explicitly, I think, if it would be part of it. But one thing that we can expect probably in the next year, uh, I, I pulled that year out of like out of thin, thin air. I don't have any extra information, but uh, I'm assuming the ambient questions or ambient uh, 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 things will make it to the exam in the near future, I think, right? But as of right now, I, I don't think it's part of it. It's not explicitly called out anywhere. Um, all right, so what else do I have? Okay, so there's, in terms of the Istio operator, so notice the Istio operator here, and then I'm talking about Istio operator API here. So there's sometimes there's like a confusion there when Someone says, oh, uh, Istio operator, I'm discouraged to use the Istio operator. Yes, discouraged to use the Istio operator that that's basically a pod running inside a cluster. But Istio operator API is the custom resource, custom resource CRD that you want to use uh, to install and customize Istio. So that is the thing. So Istio operator is the thing. It's an operator spec. It's it's a Kubernetes resource, right? Uh, and you use it to describe how you want your Istio installation to look like. Uh, so just like you have Kubernetes deployments, right? Uh, deployment YAMLs or services, right? You have a resource to describe Istio installation. So here's how the basic operator resource looks like. So we would write this resource, uh, and then we would use Istio uh, CTL, Istio CLI, to install uh, this resource. And we would end up with Istio installed with the default configuration profile. So what are the configuration profiles? Uh, so there are seven of them right now. Uh, the default one, which is meant for production deployments, and it includes Istio D, the control plane and the ingress gateway. There's a demo profile. This is the one that if you're like evaluating Istio, this is what you would go and install typically. And it has Istio D, ingress, egress. And I think it has a higher um, higher sampling rate, I think, for the um, traces. Uh, then there's the minimal, which only installs the control plane. So this allows you then to install and configure your ingress gateway separately, right? So you can you can have multiple of these Istio operator resources, right? So you could use minimal to install the control plane, and then you can use multiple others to uh, configure ingress gateways, configure egress gateways, and so on. Uh, the remote one, this is for configuring remote clusters. So there's the whole... Uh, thing about how to install and how to configure uh, Istio across multiple clusters, how to connect them. This is not part of the exam, at least it's not mentioned explicitly. Uh, so we're not going to cover it. If, if people are interested, we can cover it at a different time. But remote is something that you would use when you configure the remote clusters. Uh, then there's the empty one, which doesn't deploy anything. And typically, this is what you would use for uh, uh, like a base profile for your customizations, right? So you would create an Istio operator resource, set the profile to empty, and then manually configure everything that you want there. Preview uh, contains experimental features. Uh, so just be aware, don't install that on production because it does, might contain things that are uh, 
not 100 percent production ready they're experimental so uh, make sure you don't do that in production and then finally the ambient one this is the last one that got added and this is the one that you would use to install the ambient mesh and this one includes the control plane the cni the z tunnel all the new uh uh new components that are part of STO ambient mesh and this is where my slides end so i don't know what we're gonna do next no i'm, I'm just kidding <laughs> I know. I just need to stop sharing it. <laughs> By the way, these profiles are on GitHub. Um, it's so github.com, istio, istio, and then these manifest profiles. So all these things is not magic. These profiles, they do come from uh, from some YAM definition. I don't know if you if you want to share, if you if you can show it. So there is a YAM, YAM definition of the profile that contains what components is enabled and what components um, are not enabled and the configuration of those components. And that profile generates the Istio operator configuration that is then uh, applied. So eventually yes. you can use Istio CTL manifest, right? To generate the the, the manifest uh, to um, that they will have, that will be applied uh, in your cluster. So yes. Yeah, so I have, like, I've been going off the configuration uh, of, of the documentation page. But yes, all of this is on GitHub as well, if you want to go through it, right, and look at it. And this is, this. there's more, like, explanations here, right, on all the different, uh, all the different profiles that are there. And there's also, if you have, let me just check, I think I, I already installed Istio. 119, yes, I have 119. Peter, I might want to recommend that you maybe increase the font size on the terminal a little bit. Okay. Uh, I, let me know. That looks good. That's better. Yeah. And I think the text is fine on the left, right? Might be. The text might need to be enlarged on the. A little bit as well. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that should be good. That's better. Okay. And now I need to sit back. So. <laughs> Uh, anyway, so yeah, STO CTL profile dump. So if you run this uh, command, and this is coming from here, right? This will actually show you what the default settings are. So let me see if I can scroll lower. So you'll see it's the STO operator is the resource, and uh, CNI is not enabled, egress gateway is not enabled, ingress gateway is enabled. Pilot is enabled, right? Those are the two components that are available in the default profile. Uh, things like hub, right? So where the actual Docker images get pulled down. Then the configuration for the mesh, that's under the mesh config. And we'll take a look all the different things that you can set there. You can see that the profile is set to default. Tag, which is the version, is set to 119. And tag is basically the... the uh, 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 it's used in the Docker image. Uh, it's a Docker image tag, pretty much, right? And then the different settings that go more into uh, uh, details here. So if we look at uh, like some global settings, right? Uh, what are the default request set? Um, the proxy settings, right? So this is telling you all about how your uh, how your mesh and how the different components get installed, right? Uh, pilot, for example, right? This is, you can see all the settings for the pilot, settings for the telemetry, uh, um, and that's uh, that's what it is. So that's the profile dump. If you want to investigate that, you can just dump it into the uh, into a file. Uh, and then if you do profile list, it will show you all these. And I guess I, I probably lied and I didn't include all of them because I see there's like an external one as well. There's an open shift one as well, but uh, those are more specific. I think external is for running, installing it outside of, uh, of Kubernetes. I don't even know. It's weird because it's not, I don't think it's mentioned in the documentation, right? So it might be leftovers. Or might, he, might be an opportunity for someone to take a look and see if this is actually something that should, shouldn't be there anymore. Or um, Anyway, so configuration profiles. So let's do, um, let me see where my links are. So I'll go to, whoops. Oh, 
I have a typo here. There you go. There you go. So if you go to document Istio IO, doc setup Istio, install, install with Istio CTL, right? Uh, this document, the page actually describes how to get a basic installation of Istio up and running. Uh, how do you install it, right? And this one is telling that Istio CTL supports the full Istio operator API. So that's the actual API that uh, describes all the different uh, configuration settings that you can set uh, for your mesh, right? So this is what we saw when we ran uh, profile dump command, right? Uh, but this is the one that's customized, right? Let's go back here. And what I'll do is I'll just create a kind cluster. Uh, if you're following along, uh, feel free to install any other cluster. It doesn't matter. Just like using kind. So I've already downloaded Istio. Right. Uh, I don't have any platform specific steps, uh, but this would be this would be mostly applicable if you're running in like clusters in the cloud. I guess there are some kind things here. Uh, well, use the latest Go, install Docker, of course, Docker memory limit. So if you're having any issues with um, uh, like memory or something like that, make sure you increase it in the Docker. Uh, Docker settings. And then, yeah, and these are the other things. If you're using like Minikube or any other clouds, make sure you check out the platform setup that's specific to, uh, to those things. Requirements for pods and services. Uh, I don't think this is like installation specific necessarily. Uh, yeah, it might be if you're using like CNI and things like this in terms of uh, uh, um, like capabilities, but this doesn't really look like something that's related to installation per se, right? It's just telling you which ports are used by STO, right? So there's no conflict, right? There, uh, there's another comment to increase the screen res, so probably maybe adjusting the font size again on the terminal. On the terminal, yeah, uh, and maybe as well as the dock side. All right, let's see. Well, Whoa, this, this, this is, is way, way too. too yeah, okay. I guess we'll have to leave it at that. Yeah, yeah. but this okay. if let me let me post this in the um in the channel or in the comments. I guess if people want to follow along, uh, oh, this was not the right one. It was this one. Sorry about that. There we go. But I'll I'll try to, I mean I can make it this if this is this makes it any easier I guess. Um, okay. All right, so we have we've downloaded Istio. Uh, there's a, if you haven't downloaded Istio, if you go try Istio, this will just take you to um, to the page and it's just run the scroll command uh, to download the latest Istio, which is one nineteen. And I'm assuming, I don't think they mentioned specifically which version of um, Istio is used in the exam, but you can assume it's the latest one. Uh, and I don't think there's any specific features that would differ so much between the versions, right? Uh, 1080 would be amazing. Okay. <laughs> We'll try to do it for tomorrow then, 1080. Um, all right, so what is the simplest way to install Istio? Just the default profile where it's very simple. You do Istio CTL install, right? And this one will tell you that it's going to install 119 using the default profile, and it will include Istio, Istio Core, Istio D, and Ingress Gateway. Proceed, yes. And then this will take a couple of uh, seconds. And it will install everything on our cluster. Might be waiting a little bit. So, so what are what are the key components that get installed again when you use the? You're using the demo profile. No, I'm using the default profile because I didn't specify anything. Okay. Uh, yeah, so what it installs, it just installs Istio, Istio D, the control plane, and Ooh, the Istio crazy. Ingress gateway, right? Got it. Okay. So if we take a look, uh, I'll just do 
and SDO system. If you look into SDO system, you'll see that we have the ingress gateway and we got SDO the, the control plane. So this this is what this is all it takes to install Istio, right? So if you ever hear someone saying, "Oh, Istio is so hard to install," well, it's it, not really, right? It's just one command, so it's very, fairly easy. Uh, now, if you go to, if you want to go and configure things, right? Uh, the install command also supports the uh, set flags, so you can directly update or set the values for certain settings from the uh, Istio operator. So if I open just for a second, Istio operator on this side, and we'll see mesh config. So if you access log file, right? This one is telling us that in the, oh, actually mesh config, sorry. Uh, let's do a search. And just, just for a second. So if we look for a mesh config, Uh, access log file. There you go. Right. So with this command here, set mesh, mesh config, access log, we're basically configuring uh, address for the proxy access log. Right. So we're writing it to the standard out. Right. And same way we could configure the access log format. We could enable tracing. We could set the TC, TCP keep alive, we could set the proxy HTTP port, like all those things we could do it with uh, dash do, dash set flag. Do you mind me asking asking a question? Because I, I see this uh, flag all the time, right? So this, uh, so redirects the sidecar outputs of the access log to the standard out so it can be seen by, um, by, by whatever you're using to, to log, even by the simple Kubectl log. But why is this not the default? What where where are they going the audit logs the, if if you don't tell I don't me. think they're written to anything the access logs ah all right yeah I don't think they're yeah think you have to. I, 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 it doesn't say what the default setting is though right empty value disables access logging yeah. uh, I would have to take a look what the default one is right but uh, I, I wonder why this is not the default right so, oh. Eh. Might be a question for. It's uh, probably a very verbose, of course, right? So. so maybe... Oh yeah, 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 for sure, for sure, right? But this is just a way to show you, right? Like all these, all these settings, you can set them from the command line if you want to. But now, if you can imagine, if if you have something like, uh, if you want to change the proxy configuration, right, which is more. Uh, more complex, right? And it can contain multiple, like, see all the different settings, right? Setting that through the command line is can be painful, right? So you don't you don't want to necessarily have an STO install command with like fifteen different dash dash uh, set uh, uh, flags, right? Uh, yeah. yeah, and it and works, it works the, the same. Well, I'm... oh, it's you, Marino, right? I'm getting, uh, I, I hear myself. Uh, yeah, and it's the same thing, like uh, just like you would use it in like Helm values file, right? You can set it to Istio CTO as well, right? Uh, uh, but we'll, we'll talk about Helm a little bit uh, later. You wanted to say something, Marino? And I'll be quiet. Oh, you have to unmute yourself. Oh yeah, that, that does help if I unmute. So quick sidebar, I do see a question from Anil about the future of Istio. Uh, so we have seen some of the features of Istio through Ambient Mesh's offering, which gives us a sidecarless approach to Istio, which doesn't mean that regular Istio goes away. It just means that if you have workloads that are server centers protocols or don't do so well with the sidecar attached, that's where Ambient Mesh comes in. Now, there's also a lot of work being done to further optimize it, test the, the limits of scale with Ambient and even with regular Istio. But we're going to start to see more of like connectivity to to regular workloads, non-containerized workloads, and it's already kind of happening. We're seeing VM-based workloads being attached to the mesh, and interestingly enough, on the fifth day, we're going to cover how to do that in uh, in this little live stream. So there's a little bit of uh, future there. Uh, I will say that if you take a look at some of the open source Istio community calls, you know, attend them you'll be able to gain some better insights as to where the project is going and some of the additional things coming down the pipe. 
Yeah, yeah, that's for sure. Alessandro says one word ambient. Yes, uh, uh, it is. It is kind of the new thing, right? That, uh, but just just to like, just to point it out, right? Istio, the sidecar Istio is not going anywhere either. Anywhere either, right? It's just another option that makes it ambient. Is just an extra option that makes it much much easier to adopt the mesh in general, right? Um, all right, so let's. Uh, so we have STO. Uh, I just do this again, the same command. We have the one with the default profile installed. Uh, another thing that's useful, uh, especially if you're like playing with STO, is you want to uninstall it, and you do uninstall and dash dash purge just to make sure to remove everything, and this will uninstall STO from your cluster. Uh, let's do the list STO system. Uh, Nothing's there, right? So we removed everything. Now, if you wanted to install the demo profile, well, we can use dash dash set profile. And this will do the demo profile, right? Same thing as before. The only difference is that this time we will also install the egress gateway. Now, this command is equivalent to, and let me just copy this. I'm cheating a little bit here. Now I'll make this bigger, right? Right, so if we comment this out, whoops, that's not the right YAML comment. Um, this command, set profile demo, is exactly the same as this uh, Istio operator resource, right? It does the exact same thing. So if we show this as well, uninstall, whoops. If you do dash Y, it's going to automatically confirm it for you. So we don't have Istio. Now, to install this, what you would do is you do STO CTL install dash F, and then we want to paste this in. Now, going back to that STO operator thing, like if we had the STO operator running, which is not suggested that you do, right? You wouldn't have to use STO CTL, right? At that point, you could do STO cube CTL, apply, and then apply this resource, right? So that's one of the differences, the way that you would install it. Uh, with the operator there. So do STO CTL, install, F, paste this in, and this is going to do the exact same thing, right? So those two commands are equivalent. Right? Let me move this out of the way here. Uh, installing a different profile, that's what we did. Uh, check what's installed. So if we do get deploy and, whoops, get deploy and STO system, We'll see, we have the egress gateway, we have the ingress gateway, and we have uh, Istio D. Now, the other thing that we can take a look is this Istio operator resource. So this one is created by Istio D in the Istio system namespace. It's called installed state. So if you look at this one, I can do OYAML here. You'll notice that we get the, whoops, the actual SEO operator, right, that was applied with all the different settings, the versions, the same thing that we saw when we did SEO CTL dump. Was it profile dump, right? Oh, the only difference was that profile dump was, I think you can paste that in, profile, right? So if we do dump profile demo, right, this would be the same as what we deployed right now. Uh, we showed the STO profile list, display the configuration. We show, just showed the profile dump demo, right? Where you can uh, take a look at the uh, different things. There's also a way to look at the subset of the configuration. This is interesting if you're um, components.pilot, if you're like troubleshooting or trying to figure out, oh, what is the, what are the resources, uh, CPU requests and memory value set for for the pilot component, right? Then you could do profile dump and be specific and say, oh, components.pilot is uh, the thing that I want to look at, right? And then you could go and dump the whole config, change this, create your own uh, 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 Istio operator YAML, and then deploy it if you want to, right? Um, so this is helpful if there's a question in the exam, right? That requires you to like compare and look at the configurations maybe, right? This is how you could get to it. Uh, also one note on the exam, I I did look through the, 
through their, I think I was candidate, one, one of these links here, either frequently asked questions or candidate handbook, they aren't explicitly saying yet uh, what you can use when you're going through the exam. Uh, but I'm assuming you will be able to use or access the documentation because you guys can correct me, the ones who did the CKA, CKAD. I think, I think you can use and access Kubernetes.io, right? You yes, can okay. use the docs. Yeah. yeah. So all the domains under Kubernetes.io, it's okay to, to navigate to. Also the blogs. I mean, the, the, everything under the domain Kubernetes.io. Okay. It might be changing, though. I, I'm not sure. But uh, yeah, definitely. You, you can open another tab and you can, especially important for Kubernetes, you can go to the API. Yes. So maybe for Istio, maybe they let you navigate to Istio.io. To get the, uh, yeah, the I'm assuming I haven't found it in the documentation of the certification yet, but I'm assuming you can do that. Right? Yeah. Uh, so, I, so the exam is proctor, right? So it's not like if you open another tab, I mean, they'll they see. will look at it. So <laughs> yes, and it's, it's yeah. no question, there's a recording of your yeah. exam. So don't, don't try yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. So it's either <laughs> like it, I wouldn't even try it because either they have it blocked and even if it's not blocked, they'll see you like accessing a page that you should be accessing. And it's not definitely not worth your losing your money, right? Because that's what's going to happen, right? You're not going to pass if you cheat. Um, the other, just the last one here under profile is the diff command. And this one will show you the differences between the two uh, uh, profiles. But for example, the difference between the demo and the default one is in the amount of like, memory requests and CPU requests that are set. And then you can find the others, like the auto scale is enabled in one and disabled in the other. Uh, and then there's some extension uh, provider specified here for the tracing uh, and so on, right? So you can you look at these uh, differences as well. Right? And then you can also like generate an actual manifest so let's do manifest generate. Let's see what this one does, right? Now, the previous one, the dump one, right? So it's COCTL dump uh, profile, profile dump. Um, can I do grep? Is it, how do I get the first three lines? I never know how to do that. There you go, right? But profile dump will actually give you the Istio operator resource, right? But if you're gonna do the Istio CTL manifest generate, this one will actually give you the actual like Kubernetes service resource, right? For STOD. Sorry, I'm scrolling in a weird way here. Uh, Kubernetes services, right? Horizontal pod auto scalers, uh, role bindings. Um, I think this one might be the. What is this one? It's a pilot, right? This is the pilot here. So it shows you the actual Kubernetes deployments, Kubernetes services, all the Kubernetes native resources, right? Uh, then make up the uh, uh, the actual whole manifest, right? Not just the Istio operator, right? But with Istio operator, you're telling it, here's the Istio stuff, go and install it, right? And then Istio knows how to like use these deployments. It has these deployments in there, right? But if you actually want to do the manifest, uh, to get the whole thing. If you want to change like some things that are not easily changed in Istio operator, if you really want like a uh, fine tune control uh, uh, on across like for your installation, then you would do the mass uh, manifest generate. Grip minus A3, is it? No, nah, I don't know. Maybe I'm using a wrong grip here, uh, but anyway, doesn't matter. We'll figure it out. Um, there are also the verify install command. And I think, I'm thinking if, can you run this? Yeah. So if you do verify install, this is definitely useful for troubleshooting, right? Uh, I'm thinking there could be like a, a, a something on the certification that tells you, hey, here's a broken installation, right? Go and figure out what's wrong. Maybe you could use verify install just to make sure that, uh, uh, like Istio is actually correctly installed, if things are there, if things are not missing, right? So I'm assuming if we would 
Can I delete one of these? I'm curious what happens. So if I delete the pod disruption budget, this guy, let's say this one, STO system. There you go. So I deleted it. So I'm assuming I'm going to get, yeah, there you go. Right. So this one will tell you all oh, the pod disruption budget for uh, uh, policy for the SEO Ingress gateway was not found, right? Meaning you're, something's wrong with your installation, right? Uh, oh, describe. Oh, great. Oh, thanks. Oh, yeah, yeah. It has to be a word. Uh, what's Chad is saying. Yeah, it has to be. You have to actually grab for something, not just get the first lines. Uh, and then uninstalling, we just did the purge, right? So uninstall everything. And that's what you're going to do if you want to clean it up, if you want a clean start. Um, okay, so next one is Helm. So whatever we did, oh, actually, let me uninstall. Install, uninstall, dash, dash, purge, purge, dash Y. There you go, all gone. So the next thing that you can do instead of using the CLI, you can use the Helm charts, right? Um, and the thing here in the documentation, if I make it a little bit bigger, right? Uh, the charts, are the same underlying charts that are used when you're installing Istio using Istio CTL, right? So it's the same source. Istio CTL has those uh, uh, built in, right? Um, so let's see, what do we need? Same thing, uh, Helm, Klein 3.6, I think I have, yeah, 3.10, we're good there. Uh, you have to configure your Helm repository. So let's do that one. I think mine is configured anyway, but yep, all good. And then just to install it, uh, this is how you do. You would use Helm install, the release, the chart, uh, the namespace. And then if you want to create the namespace and dash dash set, just like you would use in the SEO CTL uh, to set any other parameters. Or you can use the values file, which is the actual big thing uh, with Helm that you can use, right? So you can specify your values file and then just uh, uh, paste it, uh, uh, like use those uh, when installing, right? All right, so uh, yeah, you can skip this if you're using dash dash create namespace. So Helm can create the namespace for you. Uh, and then the first thing we'll do is we'll install the base chart, which contains the cluster wide resources, right? So all of these things that have to be installed before uh, uh, you actually deploy the control plane. So the, so you do Istio install, Istio base, Istio slash base to this namespace. We're also setting the default revision and revisions are something that are used when um, when you're doing upgrades, right? We might We might get to that topic. Uh, and then the other thing that I'll do here is create namespace, even though I think I have the namespace created, right? Well, uh, that was me scrolling, by the way. It wasn't an error. Uh, so Istio base deployed. So let's look at the uh, status of it. I think that's the... Oh, oh Istio. Is this? Why is this... Is it Helm releases, LS, A, namespace, name is Istio base. Why isn't this? Oh, probably, right? Yeah, there you go. Yeah, it has to be. So Istio base was installed. Uh, yeah, we did LS Istio system. And it's going to show you that base chart that's deployed. It's 119. Uh, and then to deploy the control plane, we use the STO D chart. Let's do this one. And if we look at the STO system namespace, you'll see we have uh, STO D running, right? Uh, so there's a question, silly question. Do we need to set pod security admission annotations and the STO CNI. So I'm not sure, you don't have to set the secure admission annotations. I don't know exactly what you're 
uh, uh, why would you need to set that or how like uh, uh, that part? And for the STO CNI, if you want to use STO CNI, you would enable it, right? Uh, you can do enabled on on the. Uh, I think there's a complete separate yeah, section. section. Yeah. That, so the for the STO CNI, I mean, there are a few instances where you would actually use it. So the first instance would be you have security teams that don't want you to have like net admin or net proc capabilities at a pod level. So what that means is when the sidecar comes online, it has no ability to rewrite IP tables to have traffic flow out of it instead of the main application container in your pod. So by actually deploying the STO CNI, you can make those reroutes happen for traffic leaving the sidecar or leaving the application container and going towards the sidecar and then getting towards its destination. So that's the first instance. The second instance, actually, the Istio CNI is used in ambient mesh uh, in the case of doing the exact same thing where it's actually uh, reprogramming or rerouting the traffic from uh, an application container over directly to something called the Z tunnel, which is supposed to be um, a flavor of the sidecar, but just not a sidecar itself. So. There's a little bit about that. We'll probably explore a little bit more as we get on with the week as well. Sorry, Peter, go for it. Yeah, yeah. And for for the uh, pot security admission, so there is a separate guide that you can go there through that's going to show you how to uh, how to do this, right? And it explains how to install it with to enforce the specific uh, policies. You will have to label the things. And then you would have to install this deal with CNI, right? Uh, but uh, this is so. This is the setting. If you want to use the CNI, you would say the CNI enabled equals true, and then the labels uh, that you would set on the STO system namespace, right? To uh, to enforce the policies. But other than that, there's nothing. Uh, there's nothing specifically uh, on Istio that you would have to do, right? Other than enabling the CNI, right? Hope that uh, answers the question. question. Yeah, there's another question. Well, I think there's a follow-up question around K Kubernetes security post pod security policies. Oh, so you're talking about pod security admission, which is the, the artifact or resource that took over PSPs. But yeah, yeah I, I, I don't. Uh, well, it's a, yeah, I'm not. But this, yeah, if you have if you have any specific things, I can I can take a look into this one. But honestly, I haven't looked uh, too much with like combination of the uh, 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 bot security admission with Istio and all that. Also, well, at, at this point, we don't know which version of Kubernetes we're going to find at the exam, right? So we can only speculate. Uh, yes. With 128 being out, I suppose is nothing less than 127. So you can still, I mean, of course, there's pod security uh, admission and PSPs are deprecated, but uh, I wouldn't bother too much or worry too much. Uh, yeah yeah to me yeah to me honestly this sounds like a uh more like very i'm not gonna say niche but more a, like a s advanced type of thing uh might come up but honestly i don't think it would uh in the exam that specific thing right um all right so we we've installed the sto uh the base chart right so we have sto d running uh, now, if you want to install the Kubernetes Ingress gateway, you would have to use a separate Istio gateway uh, 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 gateway chart. And let's do let's just create a namespace, create namespace Istio Ingress, and then we can use Helm install Istio Ingress Istio gateway to the Istio Ingress resource. Why am oh oh of course create namespace and then I don't have it in history. All right, let's do this guy. There we go. Install the ingress gateway. And this is more componentized, compon componentized, I guess, uh, if that's the right word, uh, because you can install this TOD separately. There's a separate chart and there's another generic chart for 
the gateways, which you can either use for Istio ingress or egress. By the way, those are the exact same things, right? Istio ingress and Istio egress gateway. They're just named differently. Uh, but underneath, um, behind it is the same thing that's running. Uh, so let's see why is this taking so long? Deploy, deploy, Istio base, Istio D. Why is this taking? This is taking too long, right? What did I miss? Oh, Istio ingress. Oh, it's running. It's running. I don't know why is my helm command. Why did it fail? Because I canceled it? Maybe. Oh, but it's oh. there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's there. I don't know why. Uh, uh, maybe something froze in my computer, but I canceled it. That's why it shows failed. So, um, uh, yeah. And then if you want to update things, uh, typically you would just create a uh, values file, right? And then just do uh, update. Uh, use Helm just to update the same uh, uh, same release or create a new release. All right, let's 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 clean this up and then we'll talk about uh, the customization. So delete, actually, you know what? I just do this way. Let's go nuclear, just create a cluster. It's, it's, it's fast enough anyway. So <laughs> instead of manually deleting all the, uh, all the Helm charts, then yeah. All right, so let's find the customization. That one is more interesting. There we go. All right, so we have another empty cluster. Get pods. Yep, nothing there. And go to the customize installation thing. Uh, we've done all this, STO, CTO, STO operator, right? And this is then the simplest thing to install something or to configure something is using dash dash set which is something that we already did, right? Um, and then, yeah, you can either do it this way or create a YAML file and then just pass it in as a file, which we did earlier as well. Uh, and these are the things that you, like if you wanna configure or customize something, these are the components names that you have to know about, right? So if, if, uh, um, if there's a scenario that tells you, oh, uh, change something in the pilot components, right? This is the component that you would use or ingress gateway or egress gateway, right? And that's where you would have to go and uh, change the things, right? So let's say if you wanted to uh, install Istio without the pilot, right? You can set that enabled value to false, right? Or another one would be kind of defies the purpose, but let's say you have, just make this a little bit bigger. Well, this is this is the biggest I can get with VS Code. So <laughs> uh, I'll go one lower. So it's uh, uh. so let's say we wanted to install the demo profile and ignore the uh, copilot. Install the demo profile, uh, but we want to disable the egress gateway. Right? How would we do this? We would do Let's see, egress gateway, I'm assuming, right? And then enabled equals false, right? So if we would do this, and I hope this works, if not, we'll have to figure it out. Install. Oh, it's not, I know I missed something. What did I miss? Error unmarshal, oh, whoops. I think it's like this, right? There we go. STO. Install. No. Don't you just love YAML indentation? <laughs> oh, it's like <laughs> I think it is the egress, Istio Istio egress gateway. I think you have to specify the name. I haven't done this in a while, so let me see. Oops. Ah, there you go. Right. Uh, so let, let me do a clean, clean screen here. So it looks better. So STL, 
install f this file, right? Uh, so we're installing the demo profile, which contains everything, right? Ingress, egress, and uh, control plane. But then we're explicitly saying, hey, for the ingress gateways, note that this has to be a dash here or minus here because there you can have more than one egress gateway, right? And this is the default one, right? This is the name of the default one, STO egress gateway. So we have to refer to it by name, right? We're saying, yeah, we don't want to install this one. And we're explicitly setting it to false. Because remember, in the demo profile, it's it's set to true, right? It includes it automatically. So if you would try to deploy this, it would tell us, oh, you're installing Istio Core, Istio D, and Ingress Gateways. There's no Ingress Gateways, right? Now, if you wanted to do the same for Ingress Gateways, Ingress Gateways, we would do Ingress Gateway, right? Those are the default names, right? So let's see what happens here. It's the STO CTL install dash F. Boom, there I go. So this one is just saying, oh, okay, so you only want to install this TOD. No ingress gateway, no egress gateway. Right now, let's say another thing is let's say we we don't like the default name of the ingress gateway, right? We want to have another one that's called Peter's Gateway for whatever reason, right? Do Peter's dash gateway enabled true, right? We want that one. So let's do install. There you go. So this one is now saying in installing Gris gateway. So if you would go ahead and install this, uh, we're going to end up with a gateway with this default name, Peter's gateway. Right? I don't know why would someone name it Peter's gateway, but it's it's just for the demo. Okay, there we go. So if we look at the pods and the STO system, you'll see that the pod is named Peter's Gateway and then services, STO system. You get the Peter's Gateway, right? Which is a load balancer type. Let's do clear. Uh, hello, hello Arsh. I was trying to go through the install process earlier, and I was a bit confused. Well, awesome. Hopefully, hopefully this clears up the confusion, at least a little bit. Uh, uh, yeah, it's not. It's not. Istio installation is not complex. If someone tells you it's hard to install, uh, I don't know. Tell them to come and talk to us. It shouldn't be hard. <laughs> uh, yeah. All right. So. Yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to add something on top of that. So it's easy enough to get up and running, installed, running anywhere you want. The harder part is actually deciding how you're going to operate this in production. That's the hard part, right? Yes. Yes, because there's always, yes. Uh, it's, it's easy to get started quickly, not necessarily for production. But then once you start figuring out, oh, I need to customize this, I need to customize that, you might get overwhelmed with a lot of, a lot of different settings, a lot of different configurations. But I think there's, I would say, and again, I'm pulling this number out of thin air, 90% of thing, things, 90% of scenarios are probably covered by uh, like all these different options and configurations that you can, uh, uh, you can change, right? Uh, the other thing that you can do through the SEO operator API. So one of the things that we talked about earlier is, let me just find that link. Uh, let me just actually let me let me do search here. Oops, we do. Where's this? Oh, there it is. So, search mesh config, right? This is one of the things that we talked about global mesh options. So these are the, the mesh config settings that I mentioned earlier. So it was a what is the access? access log file, was it? Yeah, it was this one, right? And this is in mesh config. So let me look at the, where did we have that example? Hmm, mesh config. Anyway, I can, I can figure it out, right? So we would do, let's go here. It's mesh config. Mesh, mesh config, and then we'd say access 
access log file. Uh, what was it? Or actually, let's take this one, right? Uh, there's the global thing as well. Global logging level debug, right? And if you would do this, install. Oh, why did I? What did I? Oh, I missed the. This is the this is the problem with these like with YAML in general. It's very. <laughs> I think it's like this, right? That's why, like, when you're doing this exam, it's extremely important that you. Oh, it's values. Did you actually go and practice these things? Uh, because you don't really want to mess your exam by like things like these, right? Where you like don't know the the actual YAML and how to apply it. There you go. I got it finally, right? So values global, right? And I just wanted to show how this like the values that you can set on the command line translate to uh, YAML, right? So the same thing, we, how we did this, we could do the, where is it again? Mesh config. We could do the access, access log file, right? It's an access log file. And I think this one will show, this one is the mesh config. And I think that would be, yeah, my kid values global. It's mesh config. It's either here or access log file. Uh, and dev standard out. So let's cancel this. Install. There you go. Right. So global values and then mesh config specific values and then specific components that you want to set or change. And then this was all the segue just to talk about configuring the Kubernetes uh, deployments, if I can find it. Okay, I'll reopen it again. There's too many links. Customizing the installation. There you go. And customize Kubernetes settings. There you go. So we can customize the, the global values, customize mesh config, cus customize components, and then also customize the uh, Kubernetes settings for uh, uh, each specific component, right? So things like resources, replica accounts, pod annotations, service annotations, node selectors, affinity, anti-affinity, services, toleration strategy, environments, pod security can, uh, uh, context, and all those other things. So here's how you would for example, this one is showing you an overlay file, right? Uh, Kubernetes overlay that shows you how to configure um, and adjust the resources and then uh, uh, horizontal pod auto scaling, right? So if you wanted to do this for, let's make this a little bit bigger here. Uh, let's say we wanted to configure this for this ingress gateway. I think the way that we would do it is we would say Kubernetes resources, resources, and then let's say requests, right? Request, requests, CPU. I don't know actually what the default values are. So I'm, I'm making stuff up here or just copying whatever's there, but, uh, there you go. And then if we try to deploy this guy, STOCTL install dash F. Yes, let's go ahead. And then if we're gonna take a look, we'll see that the ingress gateway deployment. Oh, actually this is telling you that uh, it worked. Uh, I don't have enough <laughs> memory to do four, four, uh, four gigabytes or jibby bytes, I guess. Uh, but we could change it to, uh, uh, let's do. It's this. probably because there is a limit already. Oh, it's my it's my memory, right? It's saying invalid value must be less or equal to the memory limit. No, I think I think because the profile already or the Elm chart rather has a default um, limit. 
uh, yes, and then you are trying to could be to uh, request for more. Ah, uh, you're you're right. right. Yes, yes, you're completely right. Let's do the Istio ingress gateway. Yeah, you're completely right. Uh, I can find the value. I mean, it's probably somewhere in the. I mean, of course, on GitHub you get the. Um, uh, oh, is it, is your, is your manifest chart charts oh there you go there you go right i'm, I'm almost there yeah. <laughs> almost there uh oh okay so the limits are yeah, yeah yeah so the memory limits are said that's why i can't request more yeah right so whatever you you are passing as a value goes right, yeah to yeah. overwrite that yeah. whatever so if i would do requests of the default to five and this to right this to uh 20 and this should work, right? Let's see, because it's below the limits that are set, right? Crossing fingers. Uh, did I? Oh, was it because I did too many? Oh, because we had the revision tag or something at some point, right? Uh, let's do STO, CTO, install, dash, dash, purge. Let's do this. STFCTL install F. Yeah, but I think this should this should work now. Yeah. So, so actually, that was the yeah. Uh, I was trying to request more that I was allowed to request, right? But then on the other hand, what we could also do if we wanted to is we could say uh, uh, request, and then we could say limits, right? And we could increase those if we wanted to as well. Yeah. Th th this way, you are uh, also overriding the default yes elm uh, values yes yeah 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 so yeah so whatever like whenever you say oh uh, it, it takes for whatever the profile is right since i started with the demo profile whatever the demo profile has the default values for ingress gateways that's what it's going to be used unless you go and overwrite it right or change the values right um yeah, and I think these are like these are just the other ways, right? Istio setting using the helm. It would be the same thing that you would do it. Uh multiple ingress gateways can be defined. Yeah, it's a list. That's what I was. Oh, actually, there you go. This is what's showing us. Similar example, right? Kubernetes resources request. And then you could change other things if you want to, right? Service annotations in this case. Uh, uh the ports, the port names if you want to. And I guess this this is the interesting one here. Profile dump might be. Uh, yeah, this will just show you the uh, default values for the gateway, but I'm surprised that it's not showing me like the other uh, uh, the other settings. But uh, yeah, it's a list type. This is one thing that you don't want to forget. And you'll quickly get an error if you do, right? That it is a list. And then the same same thing, oh, we haven't shown that one, but it's the same for the pilot, right? We would do the same thing if you wanted to modify uh, pilot resources, for example, right? You would do it the same way, right? You would go and modify stuff here, just like it's here on the configuration. So if I was like if I was preparing for the exam, I it doesn't like it doesn't even seem like you have to like memorize a lot of things uh, since you have access to the documentation, right? But uh, definitely remember these, right? The component names, know the global component, know the global settings where the global settings are, the mesh config, the actual values themselves. Uh, I mean, you have access to the configuration, uh, to the documentation, right? So just know where the mesh config uh, uh, documentation page is. So if on the certification that asks you to change the access log file or something, you know where to look for or look for the default values or whatever you need to look at, right? And then same thing for ingress, ingress, ingress and egress gateways. Just know where to look for things. I think that's... That's important as well, along with knowing what you're doing, right? Uh, so yeah, so this is how we're over, right? Like 15 minutes over. Um, 
Any specific questions anyone might have for uh, for installation explicitly? Why is service mesh so complicated? Uh, I, I'm going to turn it around and ask what's complicated about it. <laughs> oh, what what is the thing that makes you think that it's complicated or makes it complicated for you and complex for you? Uh, I've heard these like this a lot, uh, and I would agree. Like in the early early days of Istio, it was fairly like it was complicated. And there were a lot of things. It was very hard to install if you think about it, right back then. But I think we're far from 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 that, right? Um, so it's gotten much easier and uh, less complicated and complex. But uh, if you have any specific things uh, that you think are complicated, let us know, right? And we can we can probably make it less complicated for you. Um, if we have Calico in the setup, then Istio is mandatory too or optional. Uh, I don't think it would be mandatory so or why let's let's look at it a different way you still need a cni to run in your cluster because if you don't have a cni none of the pods can communicate with each other um but in the case of istio and it being mandatory to run in kubernetes it really comes down to the needs of your organization and if you're ready for it like i feel like everyone's going to need a service mesh but where they, where they are along that journey is going to entirely depend on what their environment is, the kinds of workloads that they run, how much they've embraced Kubernetes and so forth. And I think we've lost Alessandro. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, so yeah, let, let me switch back to the comments. Uh, yeah, so Calico, yeah, yeah. It's not, it's not mandatory, right? Uh, Sebastian saying, I don't think the concept is complicated. I guess the biggest question I'm seeing is operating. What do you recommend orgs use on a large scale to manage service mesh? Uh, so without, without jumping into any sort of pitches or anything like that, there are enterprise grade service meshes that abstract on top of something like Istio. Uh, so, for example, um, Peter and I work for a company called Solo, and they have something called Glue Mesh, and that is an abstraction on top of Istio, which it actually helps simplify the onboarding experience. It helps with uh, managing service mesh across multiple clusters. It actually treats everything as a more of a single fabric than having to manage individual instances of Istio. But there's a lot of customizability you gain. But on the flip side, when you think about like the amount of toil that goes through having to build out configurations for every single environment you have that runs Istio, it might be ideal to use something like an enterprise grade service mesh, like Blue Mesh. Yes, I definitely agree. Definitely agree with that. Um, also, if you see at the bottom, the the scrolling ticker down there, I added the link to our uh, to the GitHub repo, and we'll try to put like. I guess slides, even though there's not a lot of them, at least not, there weren't a lot of them today, right? But we'll, um, we'll put slides and interesting links there. Uh, basically trying to build the reference repo one can use to like prepare for the exam or just learn about Istio in general. Okay. Exactly. So we are doing this all over again tomorrow. Alessandro is going to be driving our traffic management session. And that's actually going to be a pretty long session and it's going to be pretty deep as well. Because if you look at the blueprint for the ICA, it's about 40% of the exam. So there's a lot of content and a lot of practice that's going to be required to be able to get you to that, that level. But here's the other thing. So you notice that Peter was effectively using a simple terminal kind cluster and basically sourcing all his information from the docs. That's the experience we expect you to follow through with and, and be able to go into the exam with, being able to navigate the documentation, knowing where to pull example configurations. So you're not having to sit there scrap, scratching your head, where do I find this? Um, there's a question, do you prefer taking Istio certified associate before CK? No, I actually think the opposite. I think you should take your CK first before attempting to do the ICA. The reason behind that is if you don't understand Kubernetes essentials and foundations, 
you're going to have a harder time working through the Istio certified associate exam because you need to understand Kubernetes primitives to be able to understand how things function inside of Istio as well. There is no hard requirement to actually take the CKA or CCAD or KCNA beforehand, but I recommend it. it and even if you have, okay, so you do have a background in Kubernetes already. I mean, if you feel confident enough going through that existing CK blueprint and you think you know you can do everything on there, then skip it and go right for the ICA. Yeah, I I I agree. I don't think like if you don't have Kubernetes knowledge, I mean, like make get get familiar with it. It's the basis of everything, uh, uh, right? But if you already know Kubernetes, if you know how, like if you're very well versed with kubectl listing things, deploying things, applying things, editing things, looking at different things, troubleshooting stuff uh, with kubectl without STSCTL involved. I don't, I don't think I'll, there'll be uh, uh, any issues with uh, going with STO cert first, right? Uh, we'll provide more info and today, yes, we'll like, we'll figure out how the way to upload the slides somehow to that repo and then all the links that I've used, all the things that I uh, went through and yeah, we'll try, I'll try to update this today. So we'll have a, uh, uh, have it there as a reference, but yeah, just to like, uh, um, I stre strengthen the point that Marina made earlier, right? It's, there's no secret knowledge here. There's no like secret documentation or examples and code or whatnot, right? Istio.io, go through it. It's more than enough in my opinion, right? If if you go through all the examples in Istio.io, if you're familiar with all the concepts, I mean, there's, it's it's easy to say, I guess, right? Like, oh, just go through the Kubernetes, all the website and everything, and you'll be able to pass. But uh, uh, it's, there's no secret knowledge. That's what I was trying to say, right? Just pure Istio.io, go through it, practice, and you'll be good. All right. Well, thanks everyone. I, if there's no, uh, other questions, we'll, we'll update the repo, come back tomorrow, same place, same time. Uh, we'll be here, Alessandro will be talking about traffic management and there's gonna be, I think more meat on that bone than <laughs> there was today with the installation. So, um, all right, I hope to see everyone tomorrow. Yeah, Bye. thank you everyone, see ya.